Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom in conjunction with the Steel Flyers Network, www.steelflyers.com, all sports network. And we got two of the finest in the land from that very network here today. We have the very, we have the very word Steel Flyers here. We have the man, Steel Flyers, the maker, the creator, the, I can't think of any other thing. <laughs> Stop. Okay. And uh, <laughs> have Steel Flyers. Steel, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. We got hockey! Yeah. One in the books. First one in the books. Wow. And we are going to be doing some, we're going to be doing some, uh, a review, I guess you want to call it, a reaction about the first night. Yeah. What we thought about some of the things that happened. And we got Peyton on the radio, also of this very Steel Flyers network, who uh, just uh, newly, newly uh, anointed, anointed, yeah, acquired. I like that. Anointed. We, we, acquired. We did a, we did a free agent contract, contract signing. <laughs> yeah, there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> go, you still got to go through the, uh, you still got to go through. What's that in the beginning when they do to rookies? This, oh, the hazing. It's like, uh, it's oh, yeah, the hazing. The hazing. Oh, God. God. Uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about the games yesterday. All five of them or whatever it was. I haven't did my homework. I'll look it up in a second. Uh, we're going to check, talk about the games and give our reaction to them. Uh, it's It was one fun night, I'll tell you that. I watched intently. I watched pretty much all of some of all the games. Uh, but I guess we'll start off with the one that maybe wasn't as surprising or had any surprises that we thought uh, in Tampa Bay, Chicago. But still, you wanted to just mention a little blurb about yeah. some of the how, you know, did, did you have Bay the over or under on this one? What's huh? Did you have the over or under on this one? Did I have the over or under on that? Did you I have had, the over or the under on this one? I had the, I, I don't think I put in a play in it at all. All right. Know? Okay. Uh, I wanted to just touch some on some things here real quick because I wanted to mention some things. Uh, with Steve Stamkos not playing in the playoffs last year and then coming right back into a camp this year and basically just being the man. Um, coming in and um, being the being the captain and taking over. Uh, that's what I wanted to say as far as that's concerned. I really like the fact that he was able to come in and it didn't look like he missed a beat, right? And and Brandon Point came out, played really well, and Sorelli came out, played really well, and boy, the, uh, the Lightning looked like the, the the cup contenders, and Chicago just didn't. <laughs> Subban yeah. did not play well at all. Um, their defense did not play well at all. Um, they were one for three on the power play. And I just wanted to touch on that slightly because I really think that uh, Stamkos coming back was a big was a big thing for Tampa Bay. You know what I mean? Uh, coming back in there and and lacing it up and being out there. So I think that was a big thing. That's why I wanted to touch on that for the, for the Blackhawks in Tampa Bay. Yeah, uh, most of the things we really did talk about beforehand, Chicago was going to have problems with goaltending. Mm-hmm. And right. sure, one yeah. thing I would like to mention is congratulations, Mr. Kalen Foot, and I know you're watching, for uh, making it to uh, making it to the NHL and playing ten minutes last night for uh, Tampa. That's going to be huge for them to get somebody, uh, some young players in there after losing yeah. a couple. In the off season, and uh, we were talking about that as well. The Kalen Foot might make it, and he certainly did. Payne, do you have anything? Did you watch that game at all? Did you? No, I actually I didn't tune into very much of it because I knew it was going to be a stomp down by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, <laughs> Which it was. Like, yeah, uh, what you were talking there about Steven Stamkos, I think he's just he's he's so talented, and I think we forget about how talented Steven Stamkos is. Like this is a guy that was a high pick. He came back in the playoffs last year, injured, scored the biggest goal for the Tampa Bay Lightning out of that entire playoffs, was which gave him that momentum to bring home that cup. And now having Steven Stamkos in this lineup now coming back, I, I think it's going to do them wonders. And it, it was definitely. Did them wonders against the Chicago Blackhawks as well. 
I mean, they yeah, they are. Kind of, sorry, we were talking about Trevor Zegers when we were talking about junior players. And I was looking for a player with that, with that Zegers has an attitude like. And Stamkos maybe would be a guy, at least attitude wise, maybe not stylistically, yeah. but attitude yeah. wise. Yeah. No, I just was going to say that exactly that. The points that we touched on coming out um, with Stamkos coming back and then what are the issues with Chicago. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. That's why I just want to touch on that because people do kind of overlook uh, the the what Stamkos is bringing to this team. And and I think they overlooked a little bit of Braden Point. I mean, we touched on it uh, last year during the playoffs um, how the this team was kind of running through him. And when he was down, so were they. And then, because he was hurt a little bit during the playoffs, and then when he came back, boy, the team, well, they play a little better, you know what I mean? So uh, he just seems like he's one of the emotional guys here on the team, and so it was just good to see them get that first win. So, Okay, so I'm going to go over to the St. Louis Blues Avalanche game. I don't know how many much you guys saw this, but I'll talk about it because I almost watched the whole game. And uh, I'm, I would like to t- uh, just point out that St. Louis – I, I forget how good St. Louis is defensively. And I'll tell you what, they didn't skip a beat last night. Mm-hmm. Tori Krug in the lineup. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, what? this is when uh, you have a general <clears throat> manager that, and, and, and St. Louis has created this environment of a systematic environment for the St. Louis Blues. And he can go to his players and say, oh, you don't want that money? All right. You know what? You are not the team. And that includes Peter Angelo. Uh, they lost Peter Angelo, and they didn't think they, they didn't think anything of it. They brought in Krug, and I'll tell you what, I barely noticed a difference in that St. Louis team last yeah. week. They played pretty much exactly. I'd also like to point out that I w- I had my reservations about Jordan Biddington, yeah, about how he was going to play. Yeah. After, you know, kind of struggling. While last night was, if last night is any indication. I can throw that right out the window because <laughs> uh, um, a couple more guys I noticed. Uh, I'm Colorado didn't play their best game. Don't get me wrong. Okay, no, no. But no. I wanted and to talk did play 22 minutes. He he did play 22 minutes. So, I mean, that's that's almost like that same level of what uh, Petrangelo was playing right around that same kind of time. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. And I hope he keeps it up because I've been saying yeah. all along Krug is underrated defensively. I don't yeah. know why yep. everybody. Uh, he's a very underrated player, and I thought it was a I thought it was a great move. I thought it was a very good move. Instead of giving Peter Angelo nine, you get Krug for six and a half, and that's, a uh, deal. that's yeah. So team friendly, uh, everything. As far as Colorado is concerned, they looked um, they looked a little soft in the back end. They just didn't look like they were in playing shape last night yet, and uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned a lot about. Players changing hands, and they look like a team that had, you know, Devon Taves had come in. Yep. Uh, they brought in Sod. They yep. brought in a couple guys, and uh, that uh, that they looked a little disheveled. Grubauer didn't look too sharp either. I'm not a big Grubauer guy to begin with, so it doesn't really surprise me. But we'll see if he be, is able to turn it around. But Peyton, what did did you watch any of that? I didn't watch too much of it, but uh, to say that. Uh, I, I, every game that I kind of watched over this uh, over t- last night, uh, I seen a lot of rust from everyone. I think that was even with the Oilers game to Toronto, to everyone, everyone was feeling that rust. So it's definitely going to take a little bit of an adjustment period, even for Colorado to get going. Nate McKinnon and Connor McDavid, two old stars, were led off the scoreboard uh, last night, and I, I think a lot to do with it was no preseason, no exhibition hockey, just you're Great playing alongside point. of your teammates. So it, it is really hard to get going. It's really hard to get that chemistry going as well with that defensive partner. I play defense, and it is super hard to generate chemistry with that defensive partner. Right, You have to know when to go pick up the puck. You have to know when you have to fall back. You have to know if they're going to be pushing a lot or not. It, it's, it takes a lot to adjust, and with Colorado, they did do a decent amount of moves. Uh, with their team, uh, bringing in like Devin Taves and also yep. Brandon Sad, there was some new adjustments yeah. to kind of adjust to. So 
I, I wouldn't be too worried about the first game. The first game is just ripping off the Band-Aid right quick, and we should be getting back to that good hockey <laughs> here soon. Well, by the way, it's a good I, way to put I, it. Did I, I, I say, say what Devon the, no. again? Yeah. Did I say Devon? Devin, Devon. Alyssa, could you set up a spanking appointment for me, please? I did it again. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, set that up for me. Okay, yeah, all right. Go. Look, I I gotta stop doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Avalanche, I agree. They looked a little flat coming out, um, mm-hmm. and the Blues looked a little bit more more together. They looked yeah. a little bit more like they were the team. They 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 were a little bit more up on their skates. They, you know what I mean? They were winning the battles to the to the to the boards. You yeah. know, they were winning the puck battles more. You know what and, I mean? And you look so, at St. Louis. They didn't really do very much. Like they got brought in Krug. They they um they they have pretty much the same team, and that that's what you could say about a lot of teams that did really good last night was the teams that kept their team together, and they didn't do too much of change because now you don't have to worry about trying to generate any chemistry in camp. You already can just got come it. right in, and you already got it. You could start off red hot like the Blues did. I mean, one I, or I think two it's guys also- inserted into the lineup. You know what I mean? One or two guys, eh, you can handle that. You know, but when you get a third of your back end is changed Mm -hmm. or even a full line on your offensive side is changed with the guys that have come in and out and everything like that, and then you get coaching changes on top of that. So this is exactly what I pointed out in the very beginning and something that I've been harping on the whole whole time is this. No preseason, and now you got – those first 10 games. And if you're not, if you've had a lot of turnover on your team where you've had a lot of guys in and out of your roster, coaching changes like that, the, th- these chemistry games are those first two, three games, right? That we're all looking at to try to gain some chemistry and everything like that. Cause they're all going to happen. Bang, 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 bang within succession. So those first three games, you should, you know, be able to click with your team. Well, Exactly what you said, Peyton. Teams that didn't have a lot of turnover did really well last night, mm-hmm. and teams that did have a lot of turnover had some struggles. Yeah, and uh, St. Louis, just like I was mentioned before, we'll bring it back to again, and then we'll move on to the next game. But it's there's something I would like to mention. This is Craig Berube ever going to start getting some consideration for Coach of the Year? I mean, I mean, really, the guy? What? I really, yeah, I agree. Yeah, really. <laughs> Like he's he's instilled a system there that is ironclad. Here we just talked about all the difficulties and all that, but Craig Berube's team comes in like it's nothing, like nothing, yep. right? So tell me that's not a great coach. Okay, yeah. let's go on to what do we got? We we, we got Edmonton, Vancouver. Uh, do you want to go there? Maple Leafs, Maple Leafs, and Canadians. Or you want to talk Montreal? Okay, let's talk about that one. Montreal, that was a very interesting game. That to um, me, was, that to me was one of the best games of the night. I think so. The fantastic. overtime, the yeah. overtime was amazing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The way the third period ended, and then the the overtime like was amazing between those two teams, going it, back and forth. It was chances for Montreal, chances for Toronto. It was just oh, it was so high paced hockey, and I was watching it on my stream, and it was insane. Like I was yelling twenty four seven because there was a chance on the other end, and it it was great back and forth hockey. Here's the thing about this game, though, and and this is what you know. Everybody, we we were all talking about this game, about you know Carey Price, Carey Price, Carey Price. All right. Well, they they ran into the the to the to Toronto offensive line here, and and Carey Price let in a couple goals there that are very un. Carey Price like you know what I mean I'm not saying that he didn't play well because I mean 32 shots for the Canadians 34 shots to for for Toronto you know what I mean Uh, so it's not like he was getting completely peppered out there you know like facing 40 or 50 shots but I agree man that a lot of rotation there on the Canadians but they that seemed like that just like they just skated right on like it didn't even seem to matter with them Mm -hmm. you know they had the I think they have had some of the most turnaround of far as far as lineup changes and things of that nature and you couldn't even tell yep Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah some interesting things uh oh well there there's another one Claude Julian Again, 
a guy who's a systematic coach who plays a very simple game. He plays a very simple system, yep. but it's an effective system. So players can come in and go, oh, you're doing that? That that's that's it, <laughs> you know. There's nothing okay. too complex about it, but it's extremely effective. Yeah, and uh, it showed last night. A couple yeah. of things I would like to note about uh, the Montreal lineup last night. Uh, before I pass it to you, Peyton, um, I did. I was kind of suspect about Romanov, but mm-hmm. after watching him last night, he was great. He was great. They played him 21 minutes. He did not look, not only did he look not out of place, right. he looked very good. And he, and he beat out Edmondson, their other big move on defense for ice time. He played 21 and Edmondson played 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler Toffoli, who they brought in, played 16 minutes, about average, but what you expected for him and then we got to talk about josh anderson oh My josh God. anderson two what goals on the, the night and, and we're not even I'll talking about duran we're not even <laughs> talking about duran who put up three points as well three assists yeah. these are two guys <laughs> Good for that him. everyone was saying that oh these guys are not going to play very well this year anderson he's just going to play the same well this guy he's put up points before Josh Anderson put up hella points before. Juwan as well. Juwan's has been needing some players to play alongside of. Montreal's just been a poorly mismanaged team. And this year they built, I felt like a tank. They're hitting. They were 32 hits to 14 against Toronto. They were a bruising team. (laughs) Sherrod was bullying Matthews out there. Matthews was whining at the bench because he got cross-checked a couple good times in his back. This Montreal Aww. Canadiens team is one of the most physical teams in this division. And goaltending, even Price, yeah, he was struggling. But even Anderson was struggling. Yeah. He, even yeah, he yeah. wasn't looking that great. Both yeah, yeah. teams, goaltending-wise, didn't look that great. Everyone was goal scoring. And Montreal seemed to be like they were a proper team. It felt like Anderson was playing there for years. And he was lighting it up for the Montreal Canadiens. And I think if they continue with that physicality and the speed that they have, they could be a dominant team. Toronto, I think Toronto did very good. I think the energy that they brought with Simmons and him going out there and fighting for the team just gets them going a little bit more. Uh, Joe Thornton did play a lot of ice time out there uh, for an older guy, so we'll have to see how that goes throughout the year. But Joe Thornton seems to be having some good chemistry alongside of Matthews and Marner and trying to make him a bit happier. And that's yeah. why they brought Thornton that's in. was. The, in. Yep. to make that roster happy. And uh, it seems to be doing that, and they seem to be having a lot of fun out there. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. The, I really liked everything that you said, Peyton, because to me, this was one of the best games of the night. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, and to see Suzuki out there flying around three hits, 18 minutes of ice time, he had a goal! Hey, 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 hey. That's what they brought him in there for, right? Shea mm-hmm. Weber, man, he was flying around too, right? He had, what, five hits, 24 minutes of ice time. He even had an assist. So, hey, what? Okay. Same thing with Toronto. Man, I really liked how they played. I really liked uh, what, what they were doing on the front end. Um, I really liked the fight from Simmons. Of course, you know, you can't can't go wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. I really liked what Nylander was doing. Um, I, I, I really appreciated his game uh, getting on the scoreboard with two goals, but he also had 18 minutes of ice time. OK, and then uh, Toronto was two of four on the power play Canadians, two of three. OK, so I think that was part of the factor of the game there, too. They both scored on the power play. They So, you know what I mean? So they were five on five power play. And that's why I thought this was one of the most exciting games of the night. Well, I, I think one of the reasons why it was the most exciting games of the night is I still saw some pretty big issues Toronto defensively. Um, Bogosian looked like what I thought Bogosian was, and that's not very good. Better than CeCe? Yes. But uh, still not what I would call a guy I'd want to – he only played 10 minutes a night. Uh, 10 minutes last night, I should say, a night. The night, the last <laughs> night, uh, Dermot played more like he's supposed to. Twelve minutes, which was good. Yeah. Brody played twenty minutes, twelve. Their big acquisition, yeah. twenty-two minutes, twenty-two minutes. He looked not bad, but it's a new team. I'm going to give him a little rope. See how everything works out there. Um, but their defense overall 
still didn't look great. And uh, uh, that is really the ongoing saga. That's the ongoing story in Toronto, right? It's can they ha- muster up enough defense with their forward and forwards <sighs> and their defense to be able to. Um, Anderson didn't have his best night, but I still saw the same issues where he was having mm-hmm. to stop shots he shouldn't have had to stop. Do you see that, Peyton? Yeah, yeah. The thing is about the defense with Toronto, and even when I was talking about it, they only really brought in Brody and Bogosian, right? Justin Hall, eh, defensively, eh. Toronto I mean, fans seem to Bogosian. love this guy for some reason, yes. and I watch, and I'm like, what? Yeah. So go ahead, sir. They're, they're only good defensemen is like TJ Brody, uh, Muzzin, and Riley. Even then, Brody is... And some nights, like he's going to be off and on. Uh, we'll have to see if they can generate that chemistry. But it's just like the same thing with Edmonton. Toronto's always going to have problems with their defense. This is the way they built their team. They're a powerhouse goal scoring wise. And when they don't get goal scoring going, they're going to lose the game, which they almost did. But they were able to get that goal scoring going on later on near the end. And they were able to pull off the victory. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing with Toronto. They're a goal scoring team and you need to continue that. But they definitely need to step up defensively, and, and that's going to be a big thing going into next game is what they'll do with the defensive pairings if they'll swap things up or if they'll continue to go with what they what they have. I think Toronto, the way that they played, I, I think they played very good. Uh, I think moving forward, they're, they're going to be a really, really good team in the, the North Division. But, man, I'm excited for the, the next game between Toronto and Montreal, man. It was a spectacular game between these two, and I think it's going to be all the way through. Every single game is just going to be spectacular between these two teams. All right, we could talk forever about this game and all the other games, so we better get on to another one here. Uh, let's get to Edmonton, Vancouver, and uh, or no, yeah, well, is that what we can do? That one, sure. We can do that one. Okay, Edmonton, Vancouver. Uh, well, let me tell you right off the top there, we, I, I am an Oilers in Philadelphia Flyers fan and, uh, Peyton is a diehard Oilers fan. I watched him, by the way, head over to, uh, Peyton's live. Where do you do your live there, Peyton? I do it on twitch.tv on Peyton on the radio. I do live streams on there. I'm going to be doing tons of play by play throughout the year and just some other NHL content. Let me tell you, he loses his, you know what? I watched it last night. I was laughing my butt off, man. It was great. It was absolutely fantastic. You got to check it out. We might do some together. Yeah. 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 You'll watch my reactions as he freaks out. See, I was on the other end. Right, I was on the other end. I was watching the off the wall hockey when he was doing his live calls. Uh, I saw right? that too. So yeah. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Edmonton and Vancouver. Uh, I'm just going to give it over to you because I know. Look at you can barely hold back. You want to <laughs> sit right here. Let him so go. I'm going to give go, it over to you. Oh, man, I can oh, blow man. a. I can blow a, 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 a pipe or something, man. This team frustrated me last night. The way that they played, but. I'll give it to them. It's the first game. I, I even said it in my video. It was a bit of rust, and there was a bit of bit of uh, rust. I, there, there was a lot of bad players last night. Uh, one of them I would have to say was Jujar Kara. Uh, last year, uh, I only liked him in two games out of the 75 games that we played last year, um, which is bad to say because I usually like a decent amount of players of the Edmonton Oilers, but Jujar Kara I've never been a fan of. He's lazy. Uh, the Niels Hoglander goal shouldn't have been a goal. He could have easily pushed him off the puck, something. But Jujar, being lazy as he is, just lets Niels Hoglander walk right on by and score an easy goal. Um, the entire game for the Edmonton Oilers was a real sloppy play. Uh, I think the best line was the Cahoon Drysaddle Yamamoto line. Uh, the chemistry is still great between Drysaddle and Cahoon. I think they had some of the best chemistry last night. Uh, McDavid. Um, be beware, guys. McDavid is going to have a stellar night tonight. He was frustrated last night that he couldn't get a goal. You could see him on TV multiple times swearing that he couldn't he couldn't buy a goal last night. He couldn't. And uh, the biggest thing out of last night was defense. Every goal that Vancouver scored was because of our defense. It was because our defense made a bad play or we pushed too hard or whatever. It was our defense that really lost us this game. Mika Koskinen should have got us a couple goals. And on Vancouver, Hoglander. Everything the Vancouver fans were talking about, this kid is. Hoglander is fantastic. He can pass the puck. 
He could dangle. He could shoot it. Everything Hoglander is for this team is amazing. I know people, I was talking about how weak their second line might be. I don't think their second line is weak at all anymore with Niels Hoglander playing there in Vancouver. Yeah, I'll go ahead, uh, Steele. You want to continue with that? Did you yeah. watch? Were you able to watch much of it? It's- <clears throat> uh, actually, I, I did get to catch uh, some parts of it. Uh, there were some things there that were. Uh, I, I do have to agree with Peyton. Though I do like that Yamamoto dry side line. They were responsible for three points. Uh, yeah. For for that line right there. So that was a good line for them. Uh, and uh, they. It, it's going to be. It's going to be tough, man, because these teams, to me, I think, are so closely matched as far as everybody has their niggles here and there. So Edmonton has a little bit of defensive issues and, you know, Vancouver's got a little bit of some stuff going on. I think Holpe stood on his head pretty much last night uh, for Vancouver. I think that was a huge thing for them. Um, I think that's why that that it was tough for Edmonton because – I mean, I just saw that. I mean, he, he, uh, it was reminiscent of Dominic Hashik, man. He was just <laughs> flying all over the place making saves. So that to me, I think, is going to be a big thing for Vancouver is bringing in Hopi and solidifying that goaltending. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when you have somebody like that backstopping you, that pretty much allows you to work on other things in your team, like bringing up a, a hog lander. You know what I mean? Bringing a player like that in. I, I just feel that I think with Edmonton, I think they need, they have way too much offensive firepower on the team to not be, to not be scoring more than three goals in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of where I'm at on 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 both of those teams. Yeah. Um, that being said, we have to remember, especially in the second period, we missed a lot of chances. Like there, we we did oh, the, when I, the Oilers missed McDavid. Like that was a beautiful play off the post. Um, yes. By the way, he Cahoon had like fantastic Cahoon and Drysidle oh. together. They they grew up together, and it sure looked like it last night. Like, yeah. They were making plays that looked Sedin like. Like, you know, they were very, <laughs> That's very a good close. combination. Yeah, 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 the Sedins, yeah. But, I mean, they were making – they looked like they knew where they were going to be on the ice out there, which is something we really need for our second line. I'm not too concerned. Um, my problem was, again, uh, with – Like you said, the Oilers' defense was not great. But I've said right from the get-go this year, I don't even care. Start playing run and gun against every team. The Oilers have a team that can run a gun and gun against anyone. Are you going to have your difficult times against the Islanders and the St. Louis Blues and stuff like that? Yeah, but we'll figure out that later. We don't have the D to be sitting back on our heels, and that's where we get. That's what the where the, where the Oilers got in trouble. If you're sitting, if we're sitting back on our heels and stuff like that, um, I would like to say uh, a shout out to a couple of Vancouver players. First of all, Holtby, good for you for coming in there and playing well mm-hmm. after having a shaky kind of season in Washington. He's heard a lot of wow, wow, wow about his game game the last year and a half but he played well last night and uh you levy you levy has been injured on defense there uh there was a lot of questions whether he was going to make it and he only played 10 minutes last night but he he beat out some pretty good players to be able to get on that starting lineup and good for you for that so the next game i'm a little concerned about two unless they're going to play um Koskin in back to back because we're looking at Smith next game against Demko, but we'll talk about that. That does not make me jump for joy, I'll tell you that right now. So if <laughs> there was ever a time to start playing run and gun and just score, 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 that's when the he's one. In the net. <laughs> we want to we win that one about 9-6, something like that. Uh, okay, let's get into the other we for me. Anyways, Philadelphia Flyers and Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, so I'm going to go, of course, well, it was a great game. It was a wonderful yeah. game. For Philadelphia Flyers fans, you can't get much better than that game. Uh, I'll send it over to Steele, which you can tell is a big Flyers fan. What do you got about well, that game? You what know. did you see? What is the greatest things? Is it is it Nolan Patrick playing well? I think that's one of the greatest. But you go ahead. Tell me what you think about that. Aside from the little mistake there that happened with uh, Carter Hart making that little 
pass up the middle there to try to clear the puck and giving it right to Crosby. I yep. think that was I think I think that was the the biggest thing that jumped out at me was that even though that that little mistake and it was like he was back in net and made the next save and it was like that didn't even like it didn't even phase him. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I, I gave the puck away. They scored a goal to tie it up. And, okay, here's the next save. Here's the next save. Here, you know what I mean? So that, to me, shows maturation big time, okay, especially in his game. I also agree, too. Oh, my gosh, we saw Oscar Lindblom out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't and he looked good. He looked good. Fast, 30. hitting, scoring. How you doing? Nolan Patrick looked good. Patrick did look good. The Hayes and 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 uh, and Giroux line with with Joel Faraby. Oh my gosh, Faraby. man! Who's been touting Faraby for the last two years? Uh, I love, love, love that Faraby. man right there. The big girl. Yeah. <laughs> something stuck yeah. out though, like some sore thumbs. Okay. TK didn't hear much. I mean, I know he, he got a little bit there, but other than that, didn't really hear much from him. Okay. Uh, and Coots didn't hear too much about Coots. Didn't hear his name very often. He played really well, but I he mean, like just he normal solid game. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was deeply impressed with how the adversity happened at the beginning of the game and then Philadelphia was able to weather that storm and then come out all guns blazing and then just close the lid on Pittsburgh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, some of the things for Pittsburgh that I see that are a bit of a glaring issue. I, I really, I, I just don't think that Yari is going to be the answer for you guys. Honestly, I, I, I thought he should have been pulled after that fourth goal. You know what I mean? I, I think that was, Maybe the, I, because they're playing on Friday, maybe they are not going to pull goalies now. I don't know. You know what I mean? But you don't let your goalie hang out there for six goals like that. Ding, At ding, least in ding. my opinion. You the know Pittsburgh what I'm saying? Pittsburgh Penguins are going down. <laughs> See, Their I'm, defense I'm trying to be... is horrible. <laughs> Why are they playing CC and Matheson almost 17 minutes a game, man? What the <laughs> hell is Pittsburgh doing? Look, yeah. I don't even have to say anything. Look, there you go. He said it for me. What he said. CC was, <laughs> was sitting in front of the net when yeah. the Philadelphia Flyers had the puck. And I was like, I was looking at this picture. I'm like, what is CC doing in front of the net when he's a D and they have the puck and they're playing CC and Matheson almost 18 minutes a game? They're almost playing more than Marcus Peterson. Marcus Peterson, yeah. who is way better defensively yeah. than Matheson and CC combined. And Peterson only played 18 17. Yeah. Well, yeah. Matheson played 17-15. And Matheson is not that not, good no, defense. No, 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 not and even I, close. Yeah. I have a feeling I know why Sullivan's doing that because they're thinking that they have confidence issues. So they're trying to give them all the confidence that they can but to CC, be able to. But Matt, how, ma how many times can you give CC a chance? Like That's how, what I'm how saying. How many times? It's like how Jack do you not Johnson? have confidence? You've been playing 25 minutes a night when you have no business doing so for the last seven years. If that's not, if that's not confidence. Not confident. <laughs> See, I don't know why these old hockey brands. It's like, oh, Jack Johnson used to play good. CC used to be a highly touted prospect. Let's play him 16 minutes and see how he does. His analytics doesn't look very good, but we have Mike Sullivan here. Yeah. Mike if Sullivan put, can fix everything. If we put him on the ice more, his oh, analytics wait. will Here's better. a good idea. Let's put him on the <laughs> wing with Crosby, guys. Let's put him on the wing with Crosby. I bet you not he can score 30 goals like his yeah. captain it will. Oh, man. Uh, Look, they I, are in I, big trouble there. We, yeah, I think Pittsburgh is in big trouble, too. I think yeah. that you got guys like Crosby and Malkin who are long in the tooth. Um Latang and their defense uh, with Matheson and uh, even with Manor didn't even play that well either. You know what I mean? So I, uh, what? Yeah. Good luck, guys. Uh, good yeah, luck. I, I, I that don't being know. Being said, Philadelphia came out flat. It was the first yes, period. They, did. they came out flat. 
But uh, kudos to, after that, though, Philadelphia did play well. It's not just about Pittsburgh playing bad here as well. As either. No, because they but, were losing the battles they have to the some puck. And... Things to, uh, they, uh, what was his name uh, that they picked up from Calgary there? Oh, Jankowski Jankowski. played well. Yes, uh, yeah. You know, there's some of their forwards that they brought in, Rodriguez, uh, they played fairly well, so it's not bad that way. But overall, I think they are in big, big trouble. By the way, before we go out, we got to go out here, guys. We could do this all day, I know. But uh, I did want to mention one thing that you, I'm surprised you didn't mention, just going back to the Edmonton Oilers game. Can uh, we not play Larson anymore? That'd be great. Thank oh. you very much. And, and we uh, didn't even talk about Brock Besser, who – what? How, this shot's amazing. Uh, I was watching the guy, and the guy's release is nuts. Two, two goals, goals last night. Yeah. If you have him on his on your fantasy team, have fun because Brock Besser is going to light it up this year. You, you put is Brock awesome. Besser on the Philadelphia Flyers, they win the cup for sure. Oh, that's all they're missing is a guy like that. That would be freaking amazing if they're missing anybody. No, you know. no, but I will say this. No, but I will well, say what this. What team isn't missing a Brock? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <But> I will <laughs> say this though. I I was really impressed with what Nolan Patrick was able to come in and do. Yeah, I was, I was also I was also very impressed with Scott Lawton's game. Okay, I really liked his game uh, 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 during that game. Um, Liked his energy, things of that nature. But I was really, really impressed with what Nolan Patrick did. I mean, I think he was like 8 of 14 in the faceoff dot, yeah. okay, or something he like that. Well. Yeah, he played really, For really kid, well. A kid who hadn't played a long time, he played He well. looked like the second overall pick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finally. It was good. Um, I will say something really quick, too. we got to go, though. Don't say too much about it. Somebody thought something we were concerned about. We were talking, shouldn't give him three million. Gustafson looked good last night. I agree. I absolutely okay. agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got to call it. We got to, you know, we say all the good things. We all right, did, wait, wait, wait. Can, can I? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> can, can we wait till after the first 10 games? Well, I just said he could look good last night. Okay, last night. All right, yeah. Last night, yeah. 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 <laughs> one turnover. He had one bad play, but other than that, he looked good. Yeah. Okay. okay. If he only does one turnover a night, I'll be happy. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, I'm boys and that. girls, that's our full 42. We're gonna. I'm gonna try to do this as much as I possibly can because it's fun, and that's what we do here at Perla Wisdom Industries and Steel Flyers Network and all of those things. Hit the subscribe, why don't you? Be one of the cool kids. Have a great day. Lots of love to ya.